Hello, everybody. My name is Belinda Gay. I'm one of the area sales managers here at Thermomix, and I look after all of the virtual regions, which means those where we don't have branch managers and um, full-time staff working in the region. I'm really happy to invite you all to share the international delights that the Los Angeles team will be bringing you this afternoon. And so we'll get started in about two minutes. I will also share the recipe name and cook I do link in the chat. And as we go, uh, you will see that we'll probably repeat that a couple of times uh, because I noticed in the last class that everyone kept saying, what recipe is this? So try and keep track of who's cooking what. And presenters, one suggestion is to repeat the name of your recipe a couple of times on the way through so everyone remembers what you're doing. I will go on mute in just a moment and Tyna will lead the show and I'll just be coordinating behind the scenes. We love sharing our love of good food with you and what better way to do that than with a Thermomix in your kitchen. Please keep sharing in the chat where you're coming and joining us from. We're very excited to have people from Mexico, Canada and all over the United States. So do share. And the other thing I'd love is for you to interact during the class. So if you've got a question, either in the question box or the chat box, I'll be really happy to answer those questions as we go or put them to our panellists today, who are the experts with their dishes. And you can see they've really gotten into the spirit of things. So the first thing I'm going to do as I welcome you all in again is hand you over to our hostess with the mostess down in Santa Monica, Los Angeles, and that is Tyna Frank. Hi, hello, Tyna. Hello, begins. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for joining our. Well, we don't do National Cooking Day. We do International Cooking Day because what is more international than the Thermomix? The Thermomix is like the melting pot. So welcome so much, uh, so happy to see you. My name is Taina, I'm team leader and consultant here in Los Angeles. And the goal of this session today is to inspire you, to make you curious about new recipes, to make you curious about the Thermomix. And we really would love for you to share your passion too with others. So um, the Thermomix is perfect if you want to have fun cooking, if you want to provide delicious meals for your family and friends, if you want to save time and money, the Thermomix is perfect for you, or if you want to be the cooking champion. And as I always say, the, cook, the Thermomix turned me from a cooking zero to a cooking hero. And we don't do it alone, we do it together with others. So I'm so thrilled to welcome my two co-presenters today, which represent Taiwan and Australia. So Tiffany, can you say hi? Can you wave to us from Taiwan? Hello everyone, I'm Tiffany. I'm originally from Taiwan. And uh, I will let Gwen say hi first before my cooking. Gwen is joining us almost from Australia. Say hi, everybody. Trying to unmute. There we are. Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, or should I say, g'day, mate, from <laughs> um, uh, from LA. <laughs> LA, has, LA has everything. And uh, you can follow us all on uh, Instagram. Tiffany is Tiffany Bear too. Gwen is, it started with peanut butter, and mine is tina.mix, T-A-I-N-A dot M-I-X. First up, we're starting with a dish from Taiwan, and so I will hand it over to Tiffany. Okay, so today in my kitchen, I'm going to cook xiaolongbao, which is very, very recognizable dish all over the world. And I'm very confident that after my cooking today and my demonstration, you will be able to make your own xiaolongbao, just like bring in Ding Tai Fung to your own kitchen with your thermomix. So let's get started. So xiaolongbao is known for its very juicy and soupy filling. The filling is extremely soupy. 
So before we get started with making our um, filling, I'm going to introduce two secret ingredients that can make you uh, that can make sure your filling is really well balanced and the taste is spot on. So the two secret ingredients that you can make ahead of time before you're making your shaolong bao is first is the um, ginger green onion water. So I actually just um, thinly slice the ginger and the green onion and then um, um, submit that in put into the water and that is sit overnight. So that for the fragrance and the flavor from the ginger. It really juicy, which is a chicken stock jello. I know, I know, you hear me right, chicken stock jello. It's really easy to make. You can just um, bring a chicken stock to boil and then put um, some gelatin powder to make it firm up like this. And then we will fold it in into our filling. So um, the recipe I'm using today, uh, which will be posted later on, I um, added a little bit twist of my own. The recipe is actually using the um, ground chicken. I'm using actually pork. And then remember, when you choose your ground pork, you can choose the at least 20 to 30% fat because of the, the fat that will bring you a very, very good taste of your shaolong bao. So here I have a 200 gram of um, the ground pork into my mixing bowl. And then I'm going to put, sorry, my sauce. It's just soy sauce, 200 grams, and then some soy sauce, about one teaspoon. And then I always put a lot of mirin when I'm cooking. It will balance out the saltiness of your filling. And then any kind of um, savory dish, you can put some mirin in there. You can get them in Japanese store. And then we will put into some of the ginger green onion water into the filling. We don't put the, um, the ginger or the green onion in there. And then my own twist is I actually using the kneading function to kneading my filling a little bit. The kneading function for about 30 seconds. And then I pre made one. Let me show you. It will be looking like this. And then remember one thing after the kneading, your chicken um, stock jello, you don't really put into your mixing bowl, you cut them and then you gently fold them into the filling. So this is what I do all the time. I cut them and then put into the filling. So let me show. So you will see our filling is really different right now. And then I'm going to put into a bowl and then fold in the chicken stock. Put in the chicken stock. And then you just knife it and then make it really small and then just fold them in. And little trick for you, because um, to make these shalong bao, the filling sometimes it's really not hold its shape and it's hard for you to fold them in. So a trick for my mother, my mother always put this kind of meat filling 
into the freezer for about 30 minutes. So the filling will hold its shape. It's much easier for you to work with later on. So now I'm going to put the filling into the freezer and then working on our dough. Full of dough. The ratio of making a Xiaolongbao skin, the skin is known for its really thin and very chewy texture. You will love it. And then the ratio, you can actually play, uh, play around with the, the um, ingredient here, not ingredient, the total amount. The ratio is always one part of water and then two parts of flour. So because of this um, skin, we don't need yeast. We don't need to be proofing. So you can always play around with the, the total amount of the flour you put in, as long as you remember the ratio. So I put into my flour, my water, and then just a pinch of salt. And what I always do is, I always have some leftover dough from the previous time I made them. It's more, it's working more like a starter, and then it will enhance the flavor of the dough. So let me put it in. Okay, it's a little bit of oil. That's it. And kneading for two minutes. You're done with the, the skin and let it rest about 10 minutes. At the time when it's needy, I'm going to tune, we're going to tune into Gwen's kitchen right now and then we'll come back to my kitchen later. Thanks, Tiffany. Thanks so much. I'm just going to turn on my Instagram live so I can welcome all my Instagram friends um, on as well. I love the way that you just use. Um, like the recipe that you know, Tiffany, and adapt it to the thermomix because that's one of the beauties of it. Sometimes people say to me, I don't want to follow a guided recipe. Well, you don't have to follow the guided recipe. You can use what you know of how to use the thermomix and pop everything on. So good job. I'm sort of going to do the same, but I'm not as game as you, so I'm going to guide you through um, a, a scone recipe. Um, my brief was, I was going to say, I'm making scones two ways, traditional scones and cheese scones. But what I'm going to show you at the end is actually how to do um, cheese scones because that's uh, the harder thing. It, there's no guiding here. So it says to preset the oven, which we'll worry about, and line a baking tray. I'm going to add my flour in, which I've pre-measured, um, and I've also in here added uh, salt and sugar so that's the first three steps of the recipe sugar and salt um and then i'm going to add butter the recipe calls for 60 grams of butter i always end up adding another sort of 20 grams so um i'm doing that already Tapping that in it's cold butter cut into um, pieces. And then I'm going to insert the mixing bowl lid into the cup in and, um, and that's just going to um, mix it together for five seconds. So I mix the dough together and uh, then I'm going to add my buttermilk. So what I did before coming on was I made my own buttermilk and by doing that, I, um, I got some cream and I uh, made um, butter from the cream. So I'm gonna add my buttermilk into this. Oh, no, let me show you. Because it's really important that the consistency of scones is um, it, uh, like a breadcrumb consistency. I hope you can see that. Now I'm going to add the buttermilk in there. Okay. 
See where I'm up to. Okay. Put the lid on. Um, and then get it's going to mix it. Just going to combine it really quickly. The peach is um, making scones. I've got 15 more seconds. The king making scones is not overworking the um, dough. So you've got to work really quickly and just do as much as you, as little as you can. Three, two, one. And we're done. All right. And now I'm going to go the kneading function. It's only going to knead this for 20 seconds. So again, it sets it up ready for me. Turn the knob. And um, it's going to knead for me. When this is done, I am going to turn over to timer and then I'll come back and show you how to push out and then the variation of the cheese and jalapeno scones. So, Tyna, why don't you take it away while um, the Thermomix is finishing the kneading? Well, first I want to see the result, Gwen. Can you show us what it looks like now? My apologies. I muted Gwen thinking we were moving across. Okay. Look at that. All we need to do is see it. it. I've unmuted myself. Um, live television, here we are. So there it is. It's really quite um, sticky, and that's good. That's what we want it to be. Um, so I'm going to take it across to a floured surface, and then I'll show you what to do. Great. Thank you so much, Gwen. I love that meeting function. I love the, the rhythm of the thermomix on our countertops. So welcome to uh, my kitchen. You're live here in Bavaria. Not quite. But let's pretend since uh, Corona, of course, canceled the Oktoberfest, I at least want to have a little bit of Oktoberfest in my kitchen. So thanks for joining me. The dessert that I'm cooking for you today is called Kirschkrütze. Now everybody, Kirschkrütze. <laughs> uh, so it's a typical German dessert. Uh, it's oftentimes uh, served in the northern part of Germany, but I'm sure you'll find it on the Oktoberfest as well. What I did is I added it to my weekly plan. I love the Thermomix for being able to schedule my dishes, to plan my week, to create my, oops, to create my shopping list and to have the groceries delivered as of a couple of months ago. And so I added uh, the recipe here straight to my weekly plan, Kirschkrütze. So it, it's a German recipe, but you can use Google Translate to translate it on your computer, print it out, and then just go through the steps. And um, there is a step before. So it tells you to put an empty container on the lid and then weigh into it. 20 grams of water and 25 grams of cornstarch and stir that all up. That is already done. And put it to the side. And now we're adding our cherries. And these are Moreno cherries from Trader Joe's. If you want to make this recipe, you need to get two of uh, the jars. It's a little bit misleading. There's a lot of liquid in there, so you need to look at the um, at the drained weight, and that wasn't quite uh, what the amount is here. So it's looking for 500 gram of cherries, and then 200 grams of apple juice. And um, I'm not using all of the apple juice. I will just try to add a little Kirschwasser to spice it up just a little bit. The Kirschwasser, by the way, is amazing if you want to do the cheese fondue, one of our favorite dishes during uh, the Christmas season. Now I'm adding 20 grams of the vanilla sugar. And guess what? I made the vanilla sugar with the thermomix myself in about 20 seconds. And for that, all you do is put a vanilla pod in a glass with sugar, about four ounces, let it sit overnight. And then the next day, 20 seconds, speed 10, you have amazing vanilla sugar. Makes a great gift too. So we're also adding some regular sugar, 30 grams. And then we're adding some star anise ground up. Now I didn't have it as of this morning, but about a minute later, speed 10, I have amazing fragrant 
and niece here. So I just love how so many um, ingredients that you need, you don't even have to go and buy at the store, like rice flour. If you have rice and a thermomix, you have rice flour. And now we're just adding the lid. And I'm off for seven minutes. It will cook it at 100 degrees Celsius. And now I'm heading back to Tiffany. Thank you. Before we get to Tiffany, can I ask you a quick question from the chat? Veronica has asked, could you please focus the liquid or drink that she replaced the apple juice with? So this is called Kirschwasser, and it's a cherry schnapps. And it just adds an adult version uh, to any kind of dessert that you're serving. And as I mentioned, it's amazing in the cheese fondue, and you can get it in your supermarket or at uh, Evno. So it's the Kirsch, but the cherry... Um, cherry schnapps. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll take the camera over to Tiffany and she can unmute and explain what she's doing next. So my dough is ready. Just in two minutes. Can't believe that. Most of the mixer take you a good about 15 minutes to 20 minutes to reach the um, texture of the dough that I want. But in my thermal mix, only two minutes. So that's why I say in under 30 minutes, you will have your Ding Tai Fung in your kitchen. So this is the dough. I normally just fold them in and then let them rest, rest about 10 minutes. And then um, if you have any excess dough on your blade, a little trick for you, I always do this. I put them back and then I use our speed pan or turbo function for a good two seconds and then all the excess dough will be all the excess dough will be laid onto the wall of our mixing bowl that way it will be so easy for you to take them out okay because my dough doesn't have much um, access but still see there's something on the, the wall on our mixing bowl so we just stick them out and then Every time when I'm, because um, our Xiaolong Bao doesn't need proofing time, so when I am kneading them out, trying to fold the filling in, what I do a lot of time is I put in the water into my mixing, into our bowl, and then I use the kettle function to boil a pot of hot water. So that way, when you are ready, then you are also ready to steam right away. But if today you are making, let's say, baozi, those um, mantel bounds, which needs proofing, those hot water, you can put them in there or in a bowl. That way it can help you proofing as well. So now this, I'm going to cut them out, telling you what's the size that we need for our shaolong bao. So I always just roll them out. And to about the size of your thumb, about this wide of the dough, then you can start cutting. You can either weigh the thumb, but me, I'm always just use my finger. For my mantel bump, it's always two finger. But for this, just one finger measurement. That way you don't need to measure every single thing. But I know some people will say, oh, my finger is maybe thicker or bigger. That's fine. Just remember your um, skin and the meat ratio should be one, one part of skin and two parts of filling. So that way you have an idea. And then how big should it be? I know you're asking, how big should I roll them out? Okay, the way I'm doing it, because they are not circle, I just trying to pinch the side of the dough and then trying to grab them into a small bowl like this, into a small bowl. And then I put it on the countertop 
Remember, you need flour to roll out any kind of um, dumpling skin. Flour, essential, very important. And then you just tap them with your palm, and then like this. And then how you do it is you roll out the outside of the skin, leave a little bit bump in, in the center because you're feeling going to sit on there. So that's the trick. Otherwise, your shalom bump, the button of it might break off because it's extremely soupy. And then remember, if you notice, I cannot roll it out. It keep going back itself. Remember, put more flour. That will fix the problem. Just like this. And I know you are still wondering, how big should I roll them out to be? I will tell you the measurement that I'm using. I always roll them out as big as my palm, like this. Okay. It should cover your palm like this, okay? And then so that way, every single one, the size is the same. Your palm should be the same size, right? So this, I roll them out. And now I'm going to fold it and then show you how we do it. I put my meat filling in the freezer for just a little bit. And then we need our Barona tray to be ready. And let me just show you how I'm going to make this filling. Okay, remember to hold it. There, there should be a, sh your hand, your palm should be, have a shape like this. That in your um, um, dumpling skin to, to be like going down like this, going down. And then we put in the meat filling in the center. And then your hand should be holding like this that the meat stick in there. And then your hand, your thumb and your pointer should be doing pinch motion. And remember, we only pinch the very edge of your dumpling skin. Just like this. Just keep on pinching. Pinch the very top of this dumpling skin like this. And then doing a motion like pull it. And then you will make your shalom bow, just like this. Okay. Kami, I think you should say that one more time. That was really awesome. <laughs> of course, I will do it one more time. Here we go. I have another scheme. Remember to hold it a shape. Downward like this and then put in your knee filling. If you are a newbie, I really, really strongly suggest you put in your put your knee filling into a freezer. So that way it's much, much easier for you to do it because the meat will hold its shape. And then see like this. I'm going to pinch the side of the skin like this. And then you will have your shallow bow. And then because like what I mentioned, I boil a pot of hot water earlier. So I just put them in and all you need is only seven minutes. And you will have your detail from unit in the dining table. How amazing is that? So that is my hot water. Let me put it on top and then remember, Varoma, speed one, and then for seven minutes. Now I'm all ready, and then we will turn my kitchen to Gwen. Thank you very much. So I'm going to pass it over to Gwen, 
And while we're passing across the spotlight, Tiffany, we've had a few requests from the uh, chat asking for your gelatin chicken stock recipe. So if you email that to me, I will attach it to the email that goes out. Meanwhile, that looks like awesome scone dough. And Tiffany, I have to laugh every time you say scones. I, that's me. I've had to teach myself to say scones here in the United States. But let me hand it back to you for some scones. Let's go. <laughs> You're better than me, Belinda. I make them all work out what I'm saying. It's a fun game to play. Um, so, Tiffany, first of all, can I just say that that is amazing and I'll be doing that this weekend because uh, that's my ultimate favourite. And, in fact, on my Instagram Live is my Shanghai friend, Kirsty Stanhope, and we used to go to Jin Tai Fung um, often as, uh, as a great place to go for dumplings. So thank you so much. But, Tiffany, can I ask a question while I'm here? Um, you know, the soupiness, does that come from the mixture? So it just sort of melts as it cooks? Yes, yes. Because um, you use the gelatin. Gelatin mm -hmm. is a powder that when the temperature goes up, anything will melt it. So that is the secret that I use a shortcut. Oh. But traditionally in Taiwan, we actually need to cook the stock like using the pork skin because mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, gelatin in on the skin so they cook it and cook it after the cooking all those stuff will firm it up itself right oh i love it and i love it i mean it's yeah. really hard to go um after tiffany because she's like i don't know chef extraordinaire i think tiffany but here's my um scone uh dough that I have just flattened out. It's very difficult with my camera angle, so I'm really sorry about that. I am saving up for a professional kit. Um, and my GP was um, missing in action. Apparently the um, union decided that he couldn't work because of COVID. So here I am doing it on my own. So it's flattened out. If you want to make normal scones, you just get your cookie cutter or um, a scone cutter and you just literally cut out the, um, you know, a, a disc and pop it on your tray. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do a cheese scone version. So what I did before I um, made my butter, I grated some cheese. So I just got a block of cheese. I popped it in the Thermomix and I did that on about speed eight it's not as hard as parmesan, so it doesn't need to, you know, be on speed 10. So about speed 8 for about 5, 7 minutes, I think I did. And so there is the grated cheese. So, and then after I did that, I left whatever cheese was left in the, um, the jug. I added the cream and I made my butter and my buttermilk. Um, so... I've got, like now, I've got fresh butter to go with my scones. So, you know, it's a treat. And as Tina says, you don't need to go to the supermarket and work out how can I find buttermilk. Like you literally, you know, can just make it yourself as long as you have cream on hand. So I'm just sprinkling um, the cheese down, not the whole way because I'm going to um, uh, say, say some of it. I'm on my knees here. This is how um adapting i am to this zoom and i'm just going to save the rest to sprinkle on the top so i'm going to take it from this side if i can and i'm just going to roll it so i did um, put some flour down and i'm just going to roll it into itself like that again i just patted it down because with a scone dough you really don't want to overwork it so then it's in its roll and then I'm just gonna cut that oh you know what I forgot to do I forgot to pop the parmesan in I mean the jalapenos in so what I would have done silly me is I would have just popped a bit of jalapeno along in the thing before I rolled it up and then there's your jalapeno scones. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that in the middle just like that and then when you bite into it you have the, the jalapeno. 
yes, it is spicy, the whole slice or um, a half a slice. These ones are freshly picked. I don't know if any of you started your own garden um, over COVID, but we did, and we've got jalapenos galore. So um, freshly picked, usually not quite as hot, and then the longer you leave it, the hotter they get. That's what we found anyway. So I'm just going to do a couple more for you, and then I'm just going to show you how we lay that out. Well, I'm aware that we've kept you waiting so your dough has gotten a little bit warmer. But, of course, if you did this quickly, everything would be a little bit firmer and easier to manage too, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it actually is quite a, um, like, don't be scared that the dough is a little bit uh, wet. It, it often works that way. And then I find it makes a really good scone, like, at the end when you pull it out. Lovely and moist, yeah. Yeah, 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 very much so. So pop those jalapenos in like that. I'm going to grab the iPad in a sec and then I'm going to um, put the cheese over the top and a little bit of mould and salt because who doesn't have enough of that? And if I can do this for you. Oh, dear. There. Yep. Oh, yep. 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 So it's coming in now. Yep. You'll see that... Um, that goes into the oven like that all in a, all in a row. Um, all good, just like packed, tightly packed. And then when it comes out, it just comes out and you just sort of grab your one and eat it, a little bit of fresh butter and, uh, and that's that. Delish. Who are you passing on to now? I think I'm going back to China. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So I just kept my uh, church... <laughs> My cherry dish going. Uh, so this has been cooking um, for seven minutes. And the next step, so it's all, here I can smell it. You can probably see the steam. And now we're adding the cornstarch mixture to it. And we're adding the lid back on, and then we have one more minute, and that is at um, the slowest speed, which is like a wooden spatula. And in regards to the translate option, um, I give you the tip to do the translate on your computer. Yet what you can also do is you can use Google Translate, use the camera option, and point at the text and now your uh so it's actually translated with cherry grits so you can do your bring it to a boil of coffee so you can literally take your phone and hover it over the display when you're cooking a different language recipe and uh, of course we're all waiting for cook i do to translate the recipes for us but in the meantime this is a pretty good way around. So you'll be able to cook the Chinese, uh, Taiwanese recipe uh, that Tiffany made uh, straight in the thermomics as long as you have a smartphone and a translate app. I think there's Apple Translate um, as well. So I am still making the cherry grits as it's translated. Do you kiss what's up? Ooh. That looks so good. And uh, now we have to let it cool down. It's nice and thick. Hope you can see that. Ooh, that looks and smells delish. How, see how beautifully it thickened up? Um, and to top it off, I will use some of my vanilla sauce that I made earlier today. It's using real vanilla. It's also using just a hint of um, turmeric, curcuma in, in German, just to give it a little bit more flavor, more color, and of course, more nutrients. And there you have it. Let me bring it a bit closer. Yum. I'll try it for you. I wish you can taste it as well. Um, oh, and that's why you have to have a personal cooking experience, ideally, 
with us uh, sharing it live in your home as soon as we are able to go back to our normal life. And um, I think Tiffany should be ready now with her steamed uh, buns. So mine is ready and I have my setup here. So for the dipping, I always just slice, thinly slice the ginger, just like what you have in a restaurant. You can always reproduce that in your own kitchen and you can add some um, soy sauce. And then um, I like to add some chili, chili oil myself. So you can do it too. And this is sesame oil. It's optional. You can use them too. Now I'm going to show you how great this is. Okay. And remember, our tray can be used to like catch the excess water from our Veroma dish, like this. Let me grab a spoon and show you my own Ding Tai Feng Xiaolong Ba. They look stunning, Tiffany. I've got some questions. Is that okay? Of course. All right. So this is probably just me, but I remember having dumplings just like that with some Chinese friends, and I got into trouble because I bit the dumpling in half, and they told me I must put the whole thing in my mouth so I don't lose the soup. Oh, well, there's another thing. My kids, they couldn't do that. So I, oh, they always know that it's a soupy dumpling. They always have a little bite on the side and then have a much bigger spoon to catch the juice, the soup. So you can enjoy it and then have some soup on the spoon. That's the way I, I, I teach my kids to do it. You can try it too. Yeah, it sounds like it. Or either that or I just open my mouth and pop it in because they really are so good. Somebody else, Jennifer has asked, what do you do with the leftover ginger and uh spring onion or green onions that you had oh okay let me show you, you. Use those for cooking? of course okay so um traditionally if you want to make this kind of meat filling we cut up the green onion and then um throw them into the meat filling but because shalombao the size is actually pretty small the um standard in typhoon standard the skin is only five gram and the filling is only 10 gram so in order to have that you enjoy much more of the meat instead of those green onion or ginger, they use the ginger and green onion water. They put this kind of water into a filling to give it the, the aroma and the flavor of it instead of put, putting all these things inside it. I'm hoping it uh, makes sense. Is that good? Absolutely. Yep. No, that's fantastic. And somebody says... Can you double recipes with the Thermomix? So if you're making the dumplings and you want to double the number, could you make that recipe and double the volume? Certainly, certainly. Um, uh, for all kind of dumpling, at least that's what I learned since I was born. My mom taught me the way. It's always one portion of water and then two portions of flour. So you can always double it up. Just make sure that the ratio is one uh, versus two. So you, you are totally fine. Of course, you can do that. Brilliant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think Thank time you. is ready to come back. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have yours in the oven, uh, those are ready to go back into the oven. I don't get it because it's going to take uh, 15 to 20 minutes in a hot oven. That would be about 420 Fahrenheit. And then we put it as uh, the picture of the final result to uh, to the yeah. And I am ridiculous. I unrolled the um the scones and I popped the jalapeno in them. So that is ready to go in the oven all together. See how close it is together um, without falling off onto the kitchen bench. There's always something with me, isn't there? Like my arm, like the comedic act. So yeah, so that's going to go into the oven, and then it'll just the cheese will be nice and um, golden, and um, just eat them fresh is all I can say. 
Delicious. It seems like we're taking care of your appetizer, the scone, the main dish, the Chinese dumpling, and the dessert. So culinarily, you are traveling around the world. And those are my kids screaming downstairs, even though I told them to be quiet. <laughs> um, so I thank everybody who presented today. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Tiffany. Once again, their Instagram, um, what is it called? Instagram tax hash whatever, their Instagram name is Tiffany Bear 2 uh, Gwen is, it started with peanut butter, mine is Taina, T-A-I-N-A dot mix. And now we'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy this presentation? Did you learn a trick or two? Uh, we can also do this in person right now via Zoom, hopefully later in your own kitchen. And you can schedule a private cooking experience with either of us, invite a couple of friends and have a cooking party. You can also do what we do and share your passion for Thermomix with others. This way the Thermomix pays for itself and it's just so gratifying to improve everybody's lives. And this community is just really getting started in the US and it is so exciting to exchange recipes with other users. There's something we learn every time. So there's it's unlimited fun, I can assure you that. And that is our show. It's 45 minutes, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the time with us. Contact us if you'd like to um, schedule a demo or have more questions. Uh, you can reply to the email that you'll be receiving. And I'm going to be handing off to Belinda in case there's any more questions. Anna, I have to tell you that everyone's putting in such awesome feedback about the whole presentation. They've really loved it. I love that we are such a diverse and international group here at Thermomix and it's every single person, no matter who they are, how much cooking background they've got, we can all learn from each other and it's been an absolute joy to see you three today. Thank you very much. Perfect timing just enough for me to go and help the next group to get into the webinar and set up our next session. I don't know about all of the other attendees today, but do you know we've got more than 60 people in the room, including you guys, so well done. And I'm sure they're all enjoying lots of different um, uh, classes today. Happy cooking, everyone, and happy National Cooking Day. Email will be coming through later on today, and I'm going to ask for the recipe for the chicken gelatin from Tiffany plus everybody's social media handles so that I can include those into the email at, as per your request in the chat. Thank you very much, ladies. Great work. See you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs>